Hey guys, hope you are having an amazing day. It's actually a long weekend here in Sydney, relaxed Monday. I've just finished putting together the finishing touches for the early access for the pageant sorority, which is going to be a private members group um, for pageant girls around the world who want to not only... <laughs> not only share a common interest about pageantry, but want to upskill themselves in terms of their their professional skills and also really network with amazing women around the world. Obviously, most of them are going to be interested in pageantry like yourself. What I wanted to do, and if you wanted to join the early access list, just go to thepageantsorority.com right now. And my plan at the moment is to launch, open up, on the 1st of November, um, 2021. But what I wanted to do in the lead up, because I was just looking at this the other day, there are 20 work days, 20 weekdays in between now and the 1st of November. So what I wanted to do was give you some of the reasons that I wanted to start the pageant sorority, because it, there are a lot of Let's put it this way, over the four or five years that I've been working with pageant girls, whether it's interviewing or um, coaching more recently, there are a lot of issues that have cropped up for me in the industry, and they're not all negative issues at all, um, but I wanted to address them. I wanted to do my piece. For me, the pageants are already really is about building legacy. I know that is a really, really long and somewhat pretentious word. But for me, it was a case because here in Sydney, we're in lockdown again. We're, we're hopefully coming out of it soon, within a week or so. But I had a lot of time to think. And one of the things I was thinking about, because with the pageant project, I put so much time into it um, that I wanted, if I were to stop tomorrow, I'd want to know that I had left some sort of legacy, left some sort of permanent change, like left the industry in a better state than it was when I started. And, you know, I started the pageant project, I think it was back 2016. And by this stage, I've interviewed over 200 pageant girls, created probably somewhere in the vicinity of 100 podcast episodes. And that has been amazing. Uh, I've met people from around the world. But I didn't quite feel that that was enough. I didn't feel that that was me leaving an impact on the industry. And one thing that's been very clear to me over the past four or five years of doing this is that because I'm a neutral party, and there aren't many neutral parties in the in the pageant industry, in fact, I struggle to think of any others really outside of myself that aren't sort of pageant fan sites, um, I, I, I'm privy to a lot of the behind-the-scenes information as to what goes on. And look, I'll be honest with you, not all of it is good. Um, in fact, sometimes a lot of it is more negative than I would really like because I'm not someone who likes gossip. But this is not really gossip. This is genuine information about things that are going on behind the scenes that I feel you deserve to know, not because I want to spread gossip, but so you can remain safe and you can make educated decisions because I'm going to tell you what's really going on because I don't really have an agenda other than trying to serve you versus sometimes directors or coaches, they have hidden agendas that they don't tell you. So, you know, if a coach is aligned, let's say with a system and you ask a coach, what system should I go into? And they tell you the system that they're part with, that they're partnered with. There's just all these li little sort of inherent conflicts of interest that I think there are a few too many of in the industry. So in terms of the sorority and in terms of what I wanted to do just with these 20 episodes, these 20 YouTube videos or these 20 podcast episodes leading up to our launch on the 1st of November, I wanted to give you sort of 20 reasons or 20 stories from behind the lines, as it were, as to why I started the sorority. And for to be clear, so today's one is a very positive one, which is the amazing people that I've met. Um, I was speaking to a good friend of mine, Giselle Ace, who's a current Miss Eco International, and she's over in South Africa. I'm in Sydney, Australia. I've never been to South Africa. Um, I mean, 
I'd very much like to travel now after hearing some of the stories that Giselle has told me about South Africa. Uh, but it was weird because I was getting Giselle, I was messaging Giselle to get her opinion on this other South African queen because I was looking to interview her. And I always like to canvas my friends, the ones that I trust, just to say, hey, I'm thinking of interviewing this person. Can you tell me anything about them? I like to do my research that way. And I have certain people that I trust to give me their honest opinion. Um, and she was saying, no, she didn't really know much about her, which was weird because the South African pageant industry was so small. And I had interviewed uh, Miss Earth South Africa, I think it was back 2019, Nazia Wadi. And it was funny because those two, Giselle told me this yesterday, they live only 40 minutes apart from one another which in South Africa is extraordinarily close. I mean, you can also imagine on the scope of what I do, worldwide pageantry, living 40 minutes living forty minutes apart from one another by road is very, very close, not by plane. Um, and it was weird because Giselle said she'd ne she had met Nazia through my interview. Even though they lived 40 minutes apart, I had sort of gotten them acquainted, introduced them. And then as it turns out, I think Giselle was um, in a smaller pageant, uh, just after the interview and Nazir was on the judging panel. So one of the, probably the greatest gift that I've given myself throughout doing all the interviews is definitely the network of amazing women that I get to call friends. And one of the reasons behind my starting the sorority, remember I said 20 weekdays or 20 workdays until the 1st of November, I want to give you 20 reasons as to why I'm doing the sorority. And one of the really big ones is to give you the same opportunity opportunity that I've been given. Um, to make, I mean, obviously you network and make friends with women in your local pageant or your national pageant. If you're lucky enough to get to an interna international pageant, then obviously you are networking with women from around the world. But not everyone gets to do that. And the other thing is when you're in a pageant, obviously you're competing um, and as much as we might say there's no real losers in pageant, the fact is there is only one winner and most of you will want to win and I think that's all well and good and I think you should want to win. Um, so there's a bit of an inherent issue in that if you, let's say, are helping one of your competitors, you are kind of objectively decreasing your chances of winning. So it can you know, if you help your competitor with their interview and that means you have a bit less time for yourself to prep, then, you know, you might be making a friend but in the process hurting your chances. And I know a lot of you are more than willing to do that anyway because you believe in women supporting women and as do I. Um, but there is that sort of a tray that you have to make. And the other thing is, apart from being in competition with these other women and competition being in inverted commas, the other thing is pageantry very often... You don't really get to know your com your competitors or your fellow contestants that well on the lead up. I think COVID has changed that slightly, but you know you, you might see one or two of them, but you don't see all of them, and certainly a lot of them you probably don't see that much. And then you come together for the pageant, and look, a pageant could be one day, right? You might be in the lead up for three months, six months, for a year, but the pageant might just be one day, and then you have this competition, and obviously there you're busy, you don't really get to chat. And then before you know it, you've had the crowning ceremony, winner is crowned, then you go home and you stay in touch for a week or a month and then life gets in the way and before you know it, you've kind of fallen out of touch with almost everyone, maybe aside from the best friend that you made. And that's a shame because I, I really feel that the benefits of pageantry, the big ones for me anyway, should extend past the end of the pageant. So, you know, learning how to interview properly is a skill that will sell, serve you way beyond the end of a pageant, right? It's going to be useful in other areas of life. And really the network of amazing women that you create, that really should be something that is with you for life and that you can call upon these women, hopefully, for the rest of your life and you can travel to other countries, meet up with people that you know, you know pretty well from online or you competed with and you have shared, you share that special bond of pageantry with them. And when I was doing a little bit of research about sororities, and to be clear, in Australia, they don't really exist. As far as I know, I don't think they exist at all. 
Um, but I was doing my research. And if you know anything about sororities, certainly if you're in America and you're watching this, you'll know probably more about sororities than us here in Australia or indeed people in the UK. But you would know that sororities and pageants actually have a lot of a lot in common in terms of values. The difference is a sorority is for life. You pay a membership per year and okay, so you're attached to one campus, so one college campus or one university campus. It's not usually a worldwide thing like what I'm trying to create. But you are then a member of that sorority for life. So you're an active member whilst you're on campus. You can run for executive positions such as president or vice president and things like that. But then you're also attached to alumni, like famous alumni. So people um, who were part of the sorority, who've gone on to achieve great things, they actively give back to members of the sorority. Sort of it's, it's that old adage of it's not what you know, it's who you know. So the sorority really is an advantage in terms of advancing your professional career as well. And that got me thinking. It's like, well, wouldn't that be great for pageantry? So you could have this active group of women from around the world who are really actively looking to support one another way past the end of their pageant. Because as I said, a pageant could be for just one day and that's it. I mean, yes, you might be in the lead up for a year, but very often it can be over. You blink and it's over. So that's really one of the biggest reasons for me starting the sorority was I've made a lot of friends around the world. And I was looking to scale that, as weird as it sounds, to throw in a business term about a personal sort of thing. But I wanted to scale that so that you guys could sort of build off of my network and meet amazing women from around the world. And emphasis on around the world, because I don't think I need to tell you this, but the benefits of having young women such as yourself be exposed to different cultures around the world. I mean, obviously, you you know, most of us want to travel, especially when COVID's over. A lot of us are going to be feel cooped up and want to. Tr- the first thing we're going to do is travel around the world, probably nonstop for a year if we if we can. But past that, having friends from around the world and just having conversations like I've had through interviews and podcasts, and learning about what life is like in South Africa, learning about what's what life is like in the UK or Ireland or Canada, or America, or New Zealand, or anywhere else, that is going to be a really big thing for our world at large if we're going to move forward and overcome some of the really big obstacles that are going to be problematic for our society, such as climate change, or war, or feminism, or gender equality, anything like that we're going to want to be able to pull from different views, different perspectives, and be able to be accepting of other other cultures, beliefs, and values. So that's all very roundabout way and somewhat long-winded way of saying, I want you guys to be able to make friends with amazing women from around the world. Because that's a gift that I unwittingly given myself um, through all the interviews and podcasts that I've done. But I couldn't figure out a way to really extend that same benefit to you. I mean, you know, if I, as it happened, I did bring Giselle and Nazia on to the same podcast episode. So, so they were able to talk, right? Like, talk for the first time, um, even though they live so close together. Uh, but, you know, I can't bring everyone in the pageant industry onto podcasts all the time just to meet people. So, this is going to be one of the big benefits with the sororities. So, what we'll be doing is more than likely, I mean, this is still a little bit up in the air, but we'll start a, a Facebook group um, and we may add some other social channels as well to that, depending on whether the Facebook group best serves our community. Because, you know, sometimes you start up groups and I've been guilty of this. You start up a group, it goes gung ho for a month and then it just completely dies, dies a death. So we may bring in some other things like, let's say, a Reddit um not a Reddit, what's the other one? Well, a Reddit or a Discord channel, we'll have a look. But the idea is going to be able to, we're going to give you guys a chance to network, as I said, with women from around the world. And you'll all know that you have been pageant, have been or are passionate about pageantry. Uh, So that's the benefit that I wanted to give you today in day 20 or day one of 20. 
Um, as I said, if you want to join the early access list for the pageant sorority, just go to thepageantsorority.com. It will ask you to put in your email address, and that's completely free. And that email list will just kind of be active whilst we're sort of going through the next, well, in between now and the 1st of November when we launch, and then obviously that'll transition to the pageant sorority list proper. Um, but that'll keep you up to date and give you a little bit more insight as to exactly what it is I'm creating and why. Because um, there are quite a, a lot of reasons that I'm really wanting to do this. As I told you, I wanted to leave a legacy. But I wanted to also give you a bit of an insight, more of an insight into some of the things that go on behind the scenes. Because frankly, that that's probably 80% of my time is spent hearing about these things that have gone on. Um, in the pageant industry. As I said, they're not all positive, they're not all negative. But I think the more that I can pass on to you, then the more educated decision you can make um, and the better decision you can make. And that, for me, would really feel like, okay, that's that's a legacy that's worth leaving behind. So head to thepageantsorority.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to be uploading these, th- these episodes to the podcast channel. And if you're listening on the podcast and you want to watch it in video form, Just watch it on our YouTube channel. Um, And I will speak to you tomorrow for day 19.